It is another beautiful morning here in Port St. Joe, Florida. I can't say enough about how lucky we are to get the weather that we're having right now. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just perfect. So anyway, we've already uh, we've made the first video on the cu first couple of cooks we've done here at the camp. I knew there's going to be a lot more cooks that I'm going to be doing here, at least probably three more. So just decided to go ahead and uh, this is probably going to be a separate video starting now. And uh, today I was planning on doing uh, beef short ribs and filet, but my beef short ribs are still partially frozen. So I think we're going to put that off until tomorrow. But I do have some thawed out Duroc pork tenderloins that we planned on smoking. So I think we're gonna do those. We also bought some corn. So I've got the corn, there's a fly over here biting me. Uh, we got some corn over in the cooler there, uh, soaking in some water with some uh, kosher salt. So I think we're gonna do some roasted corn and pork tenderloin, and uh, I don't know, maybe another side to go with. I think that's what we're gonna do for dinner today. Uh, tomorrow do the beef, and I, I still wanna do like another seafood, either grilled fish or grilled shrimp later in the week. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to do, and hopefully we can get a little video of this as well, is I'd like to go across the road with Abby and walk around that, the main part of the, uh, the, the RV camp here and check that out, get a couple shots so you can see kind of what the uh, water, the view looks like there over the bay. I want to check out some more campsites that maybe we can uh, reserve for in the future and uh, maybe even go to the pool. But anyway, I'm going to try to get a few shots of that to share with you on this video because I know some of you would probably be interested in seeing that as well. And then so other than that, you know, we're, we're going to be going into uh, town a couple of times each day. Um, they like to go in for breakfast, so uh, that's where they're all at now. They're, they're, they'll be back from breakfast soon. And we definitely want to go down the road to Indian Pass Raw Bar for lunch. Want to go back into town for Uptown Raw Bar for lunch. And we may pick out something else that we haven't tried in Port St. Joe as well. Evening times, we're going to be setting up and uh, doing, the, doing the barbecue here at the camp. So I'm going to bring you along for the ride. And uh, let's get going. I got Abby with me. Hey. We're going to... We're going to cross the street and uh, get out and check out the rest of the uh, campground here. This here is where they're building the new shower house and pool area, pool and hot tub, for the new section of the campground, which is where we're staying. It's going to be really nice when this is done. Yeah, that will be a nice facility there. Yeah. We got a nice big pool and hot tub there. So that's it across the street. They got that row of sites there too. We could have stayed there, but it's right next to the road. And I didn't want to hear all the noise right behind us. There's a snake. Uh-oh. There's a snake in that. Ooh. It's creepy, gross, creepy. no. It was a little one. Those sites right there where I'm pointing at is where they had us originally, but pull in only. They have a marina here, so you can uh, you can bring your boat. They have a boat launch. But you can rent boats. And you as can well. rent boats as well. Yep. Pretty cool. Pretty cool place. All right, we're gonna park here and just go walk around. Really nice looking uh, boat ramp here. They even got a fish cleaning table. This is for park use only, though. Now you guys can finally see the water out there. These are the sites out here that I'm wanting to go check out and, and maybe mark a few on the, the camp map here to see which ones might be the best ones for us to stay at later. So this spot here where this Coleman is, is, is the one that I think that I would love to try to book for later. You're basically on the corner here with the inlet behind you and the bay next to you. How cool is that? It's definitely the best spot. That is the best spot. But any of the ones right here along this road would be nice too because you have the you have the bay right behind you. So even this here. one would be good. Site 12. Hopefully the next time we make a video here, we're gonna be camped right here in this spot.
Is this all ants or? I can't tell. It's getting a little wet out here. Look, there's some crabs. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of them there. Yeah, see them moving? Yep. Let's see how the water feels. Definitely a nice area, really love this site, hoping that we can get that, but we're gonna just walk around and see what the other sites look like here. This isn't a bad site here on this end of the row also. No. Any chance we get, I will ask for a site like this on the end of the row so that you simply just don't have another camper next to you. But it doesn't happen very often that you get something like that. This is a pretty shot right here. Yeah. The palms look great with the water. You have the volleyball court here. I will crush you at volleyball. I bet you would. <laughs> I bet you think you would. Wow. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. We are, we are making notes of the sites along this row that we like. Mm -hmm. I think some are a little bit better than others, so mm -hmm. we're making some notes, doing our research. But yeah, so this side's great though, because you do have a great view of the bay behind you. You have a little bit of room behind you down on this end to, to kind of enjoy, space it out a little bit from the water. All, all in all, it's all pretty good out here. Very nice. You can go over there to the marina and uh, rent you a pontoon boat for the day. They have like half and full day rentals available. We need to ask if they and allow pets on the boats. Well, probably so, but we do know for fact, you cannot let a pet out over on the state park property out there on the peninsula. It's actually a law. They don't allow pets. You can have them in the boat, but there's nowhere to put them off at. So these are the two sites here that they had us booked on originally when we showed up the other day. But they're, they're set up wrong because they're made to pull in. Hookups are on this side. And the guy that was helping us was like, that's okay, you guys can just pull forward, unhook, and then pull your truck out. But the uh, lady at the office said, no, you cannot do that because I think they have septic system out there in that field. So they don't want you driving over the grass there. You know, if they would have just put electric on both sides, then it would be both. That's all they had to do is put it on both sides. these are empty. Sides. Everything else is almost full in here. Yep. These have been empty the whole time. Yep. Well, let's go check out the pool. I can tell that the trees are actually, they're beautiful trees, but they're still recovering from Hurricane Michael. Yeah. It, those, uh, those Cat 5 hurricanes just blow everything off the trees. Here's their pool area. It looks like a Nice one to enjoy. We plan on coming over here and getting it ourselves. Oh, that looks so nice. They also have a clubhouse there to go and enjoy and they have laundry facilities and a bathhouse here as well. But we did our laundry downtown today. They have a cute place called the Laundry Basket. The women, the women dropped off the laundry and then we went across the street at a breakfast at the bistro. And when we were done, they went back and finished it up. Very nice. This place is cute. Yeah, we like it here. Got some of the fellows behind me there that just came in with, uh, from their fishing trip. It looks like they got some uh, redfish and some speckled trout. Getting ready to clean them up over there. We just got to Indian Pass Raw Bar. Ugh. Yay! Yay. Look, look at all their seafood choices up there <laughs> on the menu. Look at that. And what's the other cool thing about Indian Pass? Go and pick your drink. It's like Adam's heaven. You pick your drink. So you see that right there? You have the uh, taps, 
you have bottled beer, you have soda, and all you do is just keep tabs of it right here on the scorecard. Anything you want. Self-serve beer. I got me some Moisture City. He's got him. Food of Brown. And then we're going to pick us out some seafood for lunch today. I'm getting the crab legs. She got crab legs last time, and they were most excellent. I'm probably going with raw oysters again. My and mom some gumbo. got the baked oysters. Baked oysters? Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's going to be good. Let's do it. You got the guy shucking some, some moisture there. Are those from the Indian Lagoon? Yes, sir. All right. That's what we're going to have for lunch right there. You got your crab legs? Ooh. Look at that. Smells delicious. It looks great. Yeah. The mom got some baked oysters. Baked yeah. oysters. Are you excited to try those? Yes. Those look good. Leave us the ones we can eat. All right. All right, so here's my oysters. These are Indian Lagoon oysters harvested from right across the street, and they are delicious. Look how, look how nice and full they are. I can't wait. These are going to be good. It's a great lunch today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How's your crap? Delicious. Good. Man. It's just continuing to be a beautiful day. We got a nice breeze through here right now. It feels nice and warm. This is this is totally awesome. We had a great lunch today. We went down there to the Indian Pass Raw Bar. You probably just saw a few clips of that. Uh, such a great place to eat. The oysters are so fresh there. All the food, everything there is excellent. The service, the history of that place. So definitely a great place to check out in Port St. Joe if you're here is uh, Indian Pass Raw Bar. So uh, we've just been kind of hanging out here. It's uh, approaching the uh, you know evening hours. And what we decided to do today, I think I said earlier I was gonna do some pork for dinner, but we're not gonna do pork today. We decided to save that for another time. We went down to the uh, St. Joe Shrimp Company, which is right just about a mile that way maybe. And we've got some triple tail fillets and flounder fillets. We're gonna be throwing those on the uh, pit barrel over there. So we're gonna have some grilled fish. We're gonna make some Caribbean rice. I think uh, Abby's mom's gonna make some mango salsa to go with the fish. And I've also got some corn. We're gonna go ahead and throw that on the grill and we're gonna cook that as well today. So we're having fresh seafood today for dinner. And uh, I'm gonna make a, I got another dessert that I've never made before. It's a cherry chocolate cake. And I'm gonna get started on that now and uh, go ahead and get that going before we start on the grill. So we'll bring you along and show you how the cook goes. Well, I forgot to show you the cherries, but what we've got is uh, a whole can of cherries down in the bottom of the camp oven here. We've got one box of uh, chocolate cake on top, and we're gonna be using one and a half cups of Coca-Cola or any kind of cola you want. I got this recipe off the Crock-Pot Ladies Instagram page. It was one they shared. We saw it, it thought it would be fun to try. So this is what we're gonna do. And then once it's done, uh, you take some of the cream cheese uh, frosting and just melt it a little bit in the microwave and just drizzle a glaze over the top of it. So never had it before, but maybe it's going to be pretty good. We're going to find out. Okay, so we got our cake cooking right there. We've got our pit bell ready to fire up. We're going to be cooking our fish on that. Now this is my Camp Chef grill box right here. It just sets right here on the Camp Chef stove. Uses the burn underneath it, underneath it for the heat. We're, we've got it getting hot. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm just kind of burning it in well. What we're going to be using this for is our corn. So here we've got <clears throat> four pieces of corn. I've been soaking them all day in salt water. And you just put these directly on the grill, just like that, and just let them roast. We'll turn the heat down. That is some of the best corn you'll ever eat. Whenever you get good quality sweet corn and soak it in water and then cook it on the grill, you don't have to use this. This just makes it convenient here. And uh, cook it on the grill until it's nice and done. And that make some delicious corn. Let's go ahead and get our corn on the grill. All right, there we go. Out a little bit. 
and start to cook. If you're interested in a really good rice that pairs well with seafood, this is what you want right here. The Zatarans Caribbean rice. This is so good. It goes great with uh, fish, shrimp. It really goes good with anything, but, but it's definitely really good with seafood. This is what we'll have with our fish tonight. And I'm just going to prepare it in our rice cooker. Our cherry cola cake has been going for 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and just give it a peek here and see how it's doing. Man, that looks ooey gooey good. Put the lid back on and let her keep cooking. Tell me how good that rice meal is cooking over there. It's actually killing me and now I'm It is so good. That's that Caribbean rice cooking in the little rice cooker there. You can smell the sweetness and the pineapple that's in it and the coconut. Man, that is like some of the best rice ever to, to uh, cook with seafood. So good. Okay, guys, we've got our Pit Barrel Junior nice and hot. Got a nice hot charcoal basket down in there. Just letting this uh, get up to temp there. So, by the way, our cake is, I think it's ready. It looks really good. So I've got it off the heat just so it can start cooling. All right, here's our fish that we are cooking tonight. So this is gonna be two fillets of triple tail. This is gonna be mine and Abby's right there. All right, well, you can see what we pay for it right there. This is from uh, St. Joe Shrimp Company right up the street. And then we have two fillets of flounder right there. This is gonna be Abby's parents right there. And then this one's ours. So what we'll do is uh, we're gonna lay these out. I'm gonna brush them very lightly with some olive oil. And then we're gonna use my favorite Louisiana Cajun blackened seasoning and then set those right on the grill and let them grill, let them cook. There's a look at our two triple tail fillets seasoned up with our Louisiana blackened seasoning. We'll flip those over, do the same thing and then repeat it there for the flounder fillets too. Here's a look at our flounder fillets. There was actually three in the bag. We didn't realize that. We thought it was just two, but we'll cook all three of them. So same thing, we'll just brush a little bit of olive oil on them and then use our, our blackening season on them. All right, we've got our fish on the Pit Barrel Junior here. There we go, it filled it up. It's already smelling so good. So I do have, let me go ahead and close it up. We just started, I just put it on there. I went ahead and sliced a lemon. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this lemon on there as well and let it cook. All right, so I think everything is about done. I'm going to give you a peek at the fish here. The uh, flounder is to temp. Triple tail needs a little bit longer, but they're both basically they're done. They're looking good. I wrapped up the corn in some foil. Just put it on low, just kind of keep that hot. But we're about ready to serve up some, some dinner here. All right, guys, dinner is served. Our fish, I think it turned out pretty good. There's our rice. We've also got uh, salad fixings right there. Abby's mom picked that up. And look at this homemade salsa that she made. Some mango pineapple salsa to go on the fish. I gotta put some of that on my, my fish right here. I haven't done that yet. Yep. We'll do that. Um, what do you guys think? It's excellent. It's awesome. wonderful. It, it'll you can't get any fresher than this and it tastes it. You can just <laughs> taste how fresh this is. So it's, it's excellent. It's awesome. Basically right across the street, getting it yep. from St. Joe Shrimp Company, the fresh fish. I mean, the uh, blackened seasoning tastes good. Everything's good right there. So this salsa is amazing. We've got a salad to go with it and the, and the corn as well. So all good here. Mm -hmm. I, I think it might be another 4.9 camp meal. Agreed. I think you're right. Could be we, five. The, the point one is gonna come whenever I give you the dessert later, the there cherry chocolate there cake. Go. We're gonna go 4.9 then. <laughs> all right, we're gonna, we're gonna enjoy our meal, guys. Once again, another beautiful day here in Port St. Joe, Florida. It is so nice outside and excited to uh, get some cooking going. So what I'm gonna be doing today is our beef cook. I have a nice slab of prime grade beef short ribs from the butcher shop. Been saving those for this trip. We got them nice and thawed out now. I salted them uh, this morning. They've been resting in my cooler inside the camper. That way they stay nice and cool. And we've also got two fillets, one for Abby, one for her mom that we're gonna be grilling, that'll, that'll come later. 
But what I want to do is go ahead and get the pit barrel ready and we're gonna get the uh, short ribs on the, on the pit barrel in the smoker there. That way they can have all afternoon to do their thing, cook. They usually take somewhere between four and five hours, typically right around the five hour range is when they're done. And after that, you know, I like to wrap them up and let them rest for minimum 30 minutes, but uh, really upwards to an hour, just let them rest in the foil. So we're gonna go ahead and get these. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do, you know, get them seasoned, get them on the pit barrel. And then we have plans to go back down to Indian Pass Raw Bar for lunch today. Her parents loved it so much. Steve said that's the best bowl of gumbo he's ever had from any restaurant that he's eaten at. So that's really saying something. I had it too. I gotta say it's phenomenal, but we're looking forward to going back there again today, getting some more oysters. I, I might try some steamed shrimp from them today, kind of change it up a little bit, but have some good lunch. Uh, we wanna go over there across the street to the pool today. We have not done that yet. So go to the pool and all afternoon while we're having some fun, we're gonna have the PBJ over here smoking some beef short ribs. So let's jump in here and get started. All right, so once again, we're gonna be using the Pit Barrel Junior to do our cooking for the short ribs. We've got a basket full of the uh, Kingsford charcoal. And what I did is I taken about 20 to 25 out and we're gonna light those in the uh, chimney right here. Once these are hot, We'll dump those on top of that, set it down in the pit, and can, and just start our cooking like that. And that'll slowly start burning in all this charcoal. I wanted to bring this up again too. If you guys are like me and you like doing charcoal cooking and you're camping at campsites, uh, RV sites, there's a lot of places that we go that do not have like a fire ring. And if you have a fire ring, then you have a good place that you can dump your uh, hot, hot charcoals. Places that you don't, you really need to have them, you know, have something to put them in. So that's why I have this tin uh, pail right here with a lid, the lid's over here behind me. But this is a good thing to have if you do camping like we do and cooking so that you have a dedicated place to dump your hot ashes whenever you need to, or if you're just cleaning things out, you need a place to dump them. And then once these are nice and cool, you know, you can take these and, and uh, dispose of them accordingly. All right, so anyway, I just thought I would mention that there. We're gonna go ahead and start getting our charcoal hot. We got our basket of, or chimney of charcoal hot. Let's go ahead and dump these in here. All right. Okay. All right. Take our hook hanger tool. Just set her down in there, just like that, right there. Then we'll take our grate, we're gonna set it in there and let it start getting hot as well. Just like that, we'll put the lid on, let that start getting hot, now we'll go ahead and prep our ribs. All right, here's a look at our beef short ribs that, that we're putting on today. But I got these from the butcher shop in Pensacola. That's where I always get my beef, always good stuff. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've already salted it, by the way. That way that's, that's why it looks the way it does. But I only salted it about four hours ago. Just a, a little bit of kosher salt on there to help get a little bit of extra saltiness down into the meat. But I'm going to go ahead and coat it down with some mustard. And then I really like the pit barrel beef and game rub. That's what I've been using. I think it's just an excellent rub. They got a, a lot of really good herbs in there that you that you like on beef. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll set it on the pit. I got a couple pieces of pecan wood that I cut from the house. That'll help provide some extra smoke there. All right, here is our beef ribs all seasoned up. I wanna get out here a little bit better shot so you can see it with the light there. All sides lightly rubbed down with the mustard as a binder and give it a nice even coating with the beef and gabe rub. It's gonna be some good stuff right there. All right, I've already got the smoke wood in there. I just set them in. Got a pretty slab of short ribs right there. It's gonna be some good stuff. We already got a probe here ready to go. I'm going to try to go about to the middle with it. Somewhere about right there. Should work. That's yeah, cooling down nicely. All right. 
That's basically it. I'm gonna hit my timer. So I'll know how long we're gonna cook and that's it right there. Now, like I said, we're gonna go, I don't know, it's about four to five hours. I like to take them to about 205. And what I'm gonna probably do, we're just gonna kind of play it by ear and see how this is gonna work out. If the coal basket, the coals uh, die down to where I need some more heat, what I'll probably do at about a four hour mark, I'll pull them, we're gonna wrap them up in some foil, put a few more charcoals down in there to get some good heat, set them back in there to finish them out, put the probe back in there. I just wanna make sure to get to right around 205 before we pull them for the rest. It's gonna be some good eating. And then towards that end, then we'll take Abby's fillets, set them in there, and let them cook right there in the pit barrel with all that nice smoke. Baked oysters, some Oyster City beer, and some steamed shrimp. Yeah. All right, so today we got the steamed oysters. These are loaded up with the Parmesan and the garlic and the butter, and they are delicious. I hear the timer going off. We got the blue dot over there monitoring the short ribs. It gets to that point where it keeps bouncing between the two degrees, making an alarm off, but they're about ready to go. So we went up the road again today to Indian Pass Raw Bar and had an excellent lunch. Some more of the steamed oysters, steamed shrimp, gumbo, a couple of beers, fantastic place. So I've been out here chilling. We've been there doing some work. I've just been out here the past 15 minutes or so waiting on that alarm to go off and it's finally starting to go off there. So let's go ahead and We've got our cooler and our towel ready for the wrap. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap them up, set them in there. We've been running for almost four hours, so it's, it's finishing out a little faster than I expected. You can see what I'm talking about here. It's just kind of like it hits in between the two degrees. All right, I think we're finally there. <clears throat> what we wanna do, I'm gonna silence this right here. All right, just hit the button on the back. We've got a little thermopen there. Let's take our first peek at them. Oh yeah, they are looking good. You see the uh, how the meat is pulled away from the bone. Let's come around this side to probably get a little better shot of it. That is looking good. So what I want to do though is verify our temp. So we will go ahead and take our little thermo pin here, and I want to check it in a couple places and see. So that, just that spot right there showing 201, 202. So we still need it, yeah, see it's not quite there, right on the very top. So we do have a little bit further to go. It looks like it's more done on that side, so it must be a little more lean over here. There we go, there's a the meaty section, all right. 196 right there. So what I'm going to do is move this probe. I'm going to find that cool spot again right up in there. And I want to make sure that we go until the whole thing is at 205 degrees. All right. So I'm going to work on that and cover it back up. So we let our short ribs cook for four hours and 53 minutes. As of right now, we got them wrapped up two, two layers of, uh, aluminum foil, so we're gonna go ahead and set them down in our cooler and let these guys rest. Finally got them to where they temped out the way I wanted to, on the top at 205. They, they're gonna be really, really good. So I'm just gonna lay them down in there like this. Keep 
keep them well insulated. We'll close it up. Bacon wrapped asparagus and potatoes. Yum. Yeah, those are gonna be delicious. All right, a little update where we're at. We have got, I'll show you this. This is our bacon wrapped asparagus cooking in the pit barrel. And I just took the potatoes out. We actually had the four potatoes in there. Now we've got them in the convection oven on warm. Those are done, ready to go. So once the uh, bacon wrapped asparagus gets a little bit more done, I got the two fillets that we're gonna set on there and let them cook right on the pit barrel. Steve just reminded me that I did not update the dessert here. Another, another cinnamon roll round. Look at that. Homemade cinnamon rolls. We just iced it and we will let the lid stay on there and just kind of keep them warm. So that's going to be some nice after dinner dessert right there, ain't it? He, he said that, that that was like the best cinnamon roll he's ever had. It was by far. <laughs> and I've eaten a lot of cinnamon rolls. That was the best I've ever eaten. I like the compliment. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so there's our two fillets right there that we're going to be throwing on the, the pit barrel. I'm going to go ahead and get them oiled up and uh, get them on there and start cooking. It's the last thing we got to do for today's dinner. All right, let's throw the let's throw the fillets on there. So you give them a peek at the uh, asparagus is looking good. We're going to put the fillets right here in the middle. And they thought we didn't eat anything healthy. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> we put some greens in there every now and then. I was, I was like, where's your, where's your vegetables at? Well, I only have room for protein and just a little bit of veggies. No, I'm just kidding. I like my veggies too. All right, it's been a lovely evening here. We're getting pretty close to the end of the cook. They're out walking the dogs and they'll be back shortly, but I think everything's about ready to go. Abby's got the table ready to go for dinner there. We've got our short ribs there. And I wanna just show you, cause we're about to finish this out. Pull the lid here so you can see, let some of the smoke clear out. And we have our two fillets and our bacon wrapped asparagus there. Just about ready to go. I just tempt them right now, they're out right around 125 so we're going to be pulling them here very soon and start our dinner so excited about trying this everything looks good it's going to be delicious we have noticed that we have a lot of neighbors rolling in now some of the sites are definitely starting to fill up we got some next door neighbors there we got some other people that's been pulling in today so we are ready to pull our short ribs out of the cooler here and cut them because we're ready to eat. Everything else is ready. It's still hot, still very hot down in here. That's awesome. All right, let me just, I'm just gonna unwrap them because this is, this is what we're having right here. They look okay, I guess. All right. Get through that little membrane on the bottom there. There you go. Wow. Oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's gonna be some good stuff. We're gonna go ahead and slice one more. Get that little membrane down there on the very bottom of it. You gotta get through. Yep, you see it's still trying to pull there. There you go. Man. That's it. Incredible. All right, we're going to eat. <laughs> this looks good. All right, so your dad just gave up his two bones, the short rib bones, for the pups. Oh, and they are ready. It looks like they are. Raleigh doesn't know which one to go after. They have to shake. You want this one? Shake. Yep. Shake. Okay. Shake, shake. Good boy. All right, there they go. <laughs> All right, that'll give them something to gnaw on during dinner. <laughs> Love it. Love it. 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's get a review from everybody and see what see what you think. Excellent. Awesome. Short ribs. Ribs are spot on. So good. It's like camping with a chef. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. That's right. The women have their fillets, their asparagus, their potato. How is it, babe? Delicious. Delicious. Asparagus is spot on. That is so good with the bacon wrapped on it. Yeah. So good. Good to hear. We're gonna keep doing it like that. Yep. I, I've got it kind of figured out now. So, and Pit Barrel does a good job too. There's a shot of mine. I got my two ribs right there. Baked potato, bacon wrapped asparagus. So everybody's happy. We are all happy. Sit down and eat. All right. I'm going to sit down and eat, enjoy my meal. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you later.